and in Trinidad. Yo, yeah. Check, check. One, two, three, four. God damn it. Oh, uh, hey. Bad boy. You know how we crazy. <laughs> hey. So this is Buddy. This is Barney. Yeah. This yeah. is not the Pep Guardiola yeah. Appreciation <laughs> Show. <laughs> It should be. It should be. <laughs> it is the Birdie and Barney show. Come, come, Barney. We have more class than that. Yeah, we have more class than that. Again, to introduce her. <laughs> introduce her. Today, we have Trinidad and Tobago's former women's senior team captain, Mailey Atten Johnson. What does it say about Mailey, boy? <laughs> National under 20 team manager. We will do this. We go do this. <laughs> Welcome to the Birdie and Barney show, uh, Mailey. How are you going? <laughs> Well, what kind of introduction is that? Is this the Earth and Bird show? <laughs> hey, leave the jokes over here. <laughs> leave the jokes over here. We're going to stop. You know, we had to really, I try it, Barney. I really try it. You know, you know, we had to start getting foot, football people on the show, you know, because Shaka is a comedian. Mail is a comedian, too. Where the football people? Uh, Girl, I vouch for you. Behave yourself. Come in here. Mail is mail, a try not to. Okay. So we are crossing oh, Atlanta now. What's, what's going on? You all have wear yeah. masks over there? Oh uh, yeah, we do. Um, it's very. It's well. Today is a good day in terms of the weather. So I'm in a good mood. Today. I'm in a very good mood today. <laughs> Mainly, what's the temperature? Your idea good and my idea good might be different. What's the temperature? Oh, uh, it's to, right now. It's 59 degrees, so it's not bad. Yeah, see, we don't talk fine Sunday. right here, you know, Mainly. We don't talk fine. There's a foreign accent you're talking there. You know. We talk <laughs> Celsius. I, I hate the cold. So you, you can I'm, hear I'm, the cold. <laughs> you can hear the cold and be in Georgia. Who's, who said yeah? No, <laughs> who's but said Georgia, yeah? But Georgia is one of the states that don't really get like the, the New Yorks and up north. You know, mm-hmm. so it's 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 not too bad, but I just I just don't like the cold. But mainly that weather report that was like Dwight York's Malta Caribbean advertisement there with that that, that Fahrenheit business. <laughs> we ain't send you there for that, mainly. <laughs> I just deal with degrees, okay? I got I, let me. I I got a, a, a an American degree, okay? So I'm I'm, I'm dealing with. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you on the show. It's a pleasure to be part of this program. I had to, you know, I had to be the bigger person <laughs> and put aside a lot of angst and anger after you tried to kill me <laughs> going up Chancellor a couple of times <laughs> and still decide to have you on the show, but that is me. I hope you come back and finish your job, Mele. <laughs> Mele, tell me, yes, tell us, sir. what do women footballers want, Mele? What do women footballers want? We, we, we're trying to select a coach. We always uh, hear... Uh, that is different to coach women than men. Any, any, any truth to that? What do you say? Wait, repeat what you just said. We, we've heard it said several times that it's different to coach a, a woman's team than a men's team. Is there any truth to that? I mean, it's just the psychological makeup of a woman. You just need to understand that. And I think you'll be just fine, you know. Um, and if you don't, you, know, you stay far from a woman's team. And and that's one of the biggest issues because football is football, right? We play in the same sport. I'll let Barney coach, take that. Yeah. A men a men coach could come and implement his the same system. He coach a men team really well with a woman's team, but he just need to understand how women operate and and treat them accordingly. And and that's the only difference. Mele. Mele. Yes, sir. <laughs> Is mission impossible. You just get a man there and understand women. <laughs> <laughs> I married and still trying to figure out how that is with you trying to understand. So it's like women. one of the best things, right? With with females. Yes, help us out. Please. We we like to ask why. Like, why are we doing this? Why is it like that? Why? Right? Mm-hmm. And some men take that as, you know, disrespect. Oh. So, you know, it's it just th- things like that. Obviously, you know, you have that time of the month you need to understand women are moody, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, the way you may speak to guys, you can't come and speak to to women the way that you approach men. So give, it's just example. Give us an example. We need examples here. What could we say to um, a, a, a male footballer that we really, really shouldn't say to a woman's footballer? No, it's just the, the approach and the way, the, the manner in which you say things. Mm-hmm. For instance, I we've, we've had men coaches who probably never coach a female team and they came in and you would swear they, 
speaking to the men on the block, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just in their approach, they just do not know. And um, it, it comes off to us like they don't care. They just here for a payday, and, and that's it. So it's so like they speak rough? Uh, like, how? For me, you know, I grew up with guys, so it, it, it it's not really, um, you know, if I could roll with the punches, right? That is right? what I say, because I, I, I know you, so. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. not everyone is the same, right? So it, it, that's pretty much that. So the way he may speak to me and the way he speak to a guy may be the same, but it have certain players cannot function under those type of that manner. Mm -hmm. Screaming and, and uh, trust me, I've seen the worst <laughs> of it, you know. And and those those are just men who do not how do not understand the the psychological makeup or the psyche of a woman. In your in your um, position as captain, have you ever had to go to a coach and tell him, "Listen, coach, same thing I explained just now. You know, mm -hmm. you could handle it, but some of the other girls, you know, they can't handle that kind of discussion, that kind of way, you know, the way you approach them, the way you, how you, you hand out your instructions, that kind of thing. You ever had to do that? That'd be ladies, not, by the way. Sorry, not, sorry, ladies. No, not, not as a player, but as a manager. You know, the, 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 the thing about it, um, the, where, where you said first that, you know, ladies like to ask, you see, I get right this time, and ladies, yeah, ladies right, right? Ladies like to ask why. <laughs> Right? right um i would find that 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 is something i wish some of the 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 male players ask because why gives the coach an opportunity to explain right. you know Correct. to explain whatever it is be it be it the system be it why we doing this exercise be it anything it allows that transfer of knowledge which is what coaching is about so i I would I, I find it strange that that a coach would um see that as a problem. You sure it's not anything else besides that? Yeah, yeah. What happens, right? Especially, you know, we we've had a lot of local coaches that coached us, and um, I think what they don't get, especially with with my my group of players, we are not just playing football for playing for fun, right? This this like this is our passion. This is our you know, bread and butter. This is what we we love and, and what we know. This is all we know, football, right? Mm -hmm. And when when on, on weekends when we when we watch the Premier League, we don't watch we watch it as a fan, yeah, but we also watch it to learn and to break break down different moments in the game and, and, and watch it as a as a coach as well, right? Mm -hmm. And um some of those coaches don't see us like that, like students of the game. And so when 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 we see a coach telling us play a, a flat back four <laughs> and one ball beating all of us, we were like, Coach, why we, you want to play a flat back four like this? You understand? And then sometimes the coach not even self knowing why he playing a flat back four. I remember playing for a coach. And we playing a flat back four in a tournament, and one ball keep beating our back four every single time. And we asking him, could we go back to how we are custom or, or or we know how to play a back four? Because just one ball keep beating us. And you know what he said to us? Well, Germany does play. Germany men team does play like that. Mm. How 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 <laughs> how could that be your response as a coach? Right? Did he coach so, the internship with the German national team or something? Ex well, I mean, and we are not German men's team. We are a female team, you know? And we don't have those type of players. So, so these are the things. So when we question those things, coaches take it as us being rude, disrespectful, or trying to do his job. You know what I'm saying? So when things don't make sense to us as females, we question it. As um, interim vice president of the Coaches Association <laughs> of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, we will be we will be erasing this part. Of <laughs> but that problem that problem exists with with foreign coaches as well, um, because that's that's t what I'm hearing is more a human thing than than you know a local coach problem. That because I know of other coaches, 
I could put up my hand that I would welcome that sort of, you know, interrogation because the thing about coaching is that players, and you will tell me if you agree or, or disagree, players mm -hmm. um, tend to try to work out whether, whether this coach know what he's doing or if he's bluffing. And, and, and when, when a coach gets an opportunity like that, I think it's an opportunity to show dialogue, exchange ideas with the players, and they realize, all right, he knows what he's doing. And you can explain, for example, listen, we could play this, black, this flat back four, but what has to happen is somebody has to be pressuring the ball. And if we don't pressure the ball, mm. we drop off or some kind of something like that now. But, you, you know, that conversation would bring about a resolution in itself. Yeah, you, you're quite correct, um, Sheppy. Um, I think you have to realize over the years, a lot of times they put coaches in these positions um, that, are, that shouldn't be, right? Um, they can't explain themselves. They can't break it down in the simplest form for players who are not as tactically smart as some, you know, and um, the programs, um, you know, continue continue to be deprived of good coaching mm. and, and 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 that's it we continue to be deprived of good coaching because when it's different again it's different coaching big hardback strong men who already know the game compared to young boys who you're developing mm -hmm. right so the way you could just okay set up a drill and let let the old up men do what they have to do. You have to break it down in the simplest form for a 12, 13, 14 year old, 15 year old, you know, and if you can do that as a coach, you know, it it takes away from the development of a player. And you know, what do you do coaching courses and so on? Is that part of the courses that in terms of um how to communicate and to explain stuff to, to, to players? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, that's, a, that's a crucial part of, of coaching. Coaching, again, as I keep saying all the time, coaching is teaching. <clears throat> and if you cannot be a teacher and cannot communicate. So communication is a big part of coaching. And, and I'm not just talking about, again, not just the tactics, but anything. Anything is communication, not just by verbal, but by your body language, by everything. Um, Meili, mm -hmm. seeing that you identified that as an issue, mm -hmm. um, and I jump in the gun here, but do you think that when you decide to hang up your boots, because mm -hmm. I, I didn't think you really hang it up yet, eh? but do you think... <laughs> when another you, question. Yeah, that, that coming for sure. Do you think that you would be looking to throw your hat in the ring as far as coaching goes, wanting to coach a Trinidad um, women's team maybe at a youth level up all the way up to senior I'm, we I'm working on my patience <laughs> as a coach you have to have a lot of patience right um, what you, you know you never saw uh, Barney at the sidelines <laughs> mainly but go ahead <laughs> I'm definitely working on that pick but your angry honestly, smurf but <laughs> go ahead mainly. I don't want to screw it on pick your angry honestly, smurf for, for Barney go ahead I've been to um, you know, a, a lot of people, you know, really advise me to go into that direction. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, as you said, I have been hanging off my boots. And that competitive nature in me to still play, I think it takes away from me having that passion to want to coach. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, at this moment, I'm, I'm a community coach at a high school, a private high school over here. But. And I and I was the assistant coach at Young Harris College in 2017, and that transition wasn't easy because again that competitive nature and dealing with players who you think should have already been at a certain level playing at at the NCA division or NCA level, you think they should be way more developed. So you really have to have that patience going into coaching. It's not an easy job. And you, you have to be 100% passionate about that job because it's a very critical and important role being a coach. Uh, again, you said 
first role of a, a coach is, is, is being a teacher. And not a teacher only on the field, but off the field as well. You know, help build young boys or young girls, character, you know, everything, everything. So you really have to be fully engaged and committed to being a coach when you get into that arena. So I want to be able to have that passion and be 100% committed to just coaching when I get into that. Because I'm I'm very competitive, so I don't want to go into a situation where, you know, I'm half-hearted and then the results does you show, you know. Mm-hmm. So for me, I'm still passionate about playing um, and coaching. I think coaching is something that w- I would prob- probably, sooner or later, down the road, be involved in or some part of the game, whether it's management or, or coaching. Okay, but speaking about playing, merely. Are you playing right now at all? Or let's say, uh, how do you get yourself back into the player pool, for instance? You, you, you'd come down here to play in the Wolf League? or How, how would that work? Um, for me, well, at this moment, uh, there's a, a fairly young league uh, right under the WPSL, um, mm-hmm. the UWS. And Atlanta will be bringing out a, a team for this, for this season. Okay. So they asked me to be part of the setup. Um, there's also a team in uh, Florida that wants me to be part of the same UWS. So just for me to decide on where I want to play and, and get back into the ticker things. Mm. So you'll be chasing Barney up Chancellor just now again then? Who in up Chancellor? Who is it? Who is it? Not me. I ain't making a mistake <laughs> twice. Who is it? You, you, you spoke about your group of players being special before. I, I take mm-hmm. it to me in the 2015 campaign, that, that group, right? Right. What do you think makes that group different to, let's say, the group in the 2011 campaign? You know, what, what was it that you girls had, your ladies had? <laughs> you know, a lot of people, um, you know, beat me up for this, but I would say that coaching... Mm. coaching, the difference in coaching, the professionalism um, that, that that Coach Randy brought, you know, and a, just just a whole different perspective he brought to the game that we've never been exposed to. And um, it helped. Uh, and then when he did what he did, even though we didn't win against America, I guess it opened the eyes of, uh, the, the federation and, and the decide to send in this, uh, the decide to send in a psychologist and everyone started to come on board after that, even though we didn't win. They just saw something in us. And, um, you know, you know, having that um, set up and the way it was set up, uh, you know, I think made a huge difference. I think the coaching aspect of it, because, you know, we've been together for, since since we were fourteen, most of us, mm-hmm. you know, so it took us so long, and I think we could have done it way before that twentieth campaign, but again, due to certain circumstances beyond our control, we weren't able to do it before then. So yeah, Maybe, I would say coaching. When you when you say the coaching, um, go into a little detail. But what made Randy? Coach Randy Waldron, what made him different? Was it his tactical knowledge? Was it his approach that you pointed out before? What was it? Was it, you know, the atmosphere yeah, that he created? What was, was it? It was a consummate professional. He didn't come with no ego. He saw uh, how our ability, our talent, and, and believed that he was able to take us to that next level. Um, I mean, when before games and everything, he would literally break down the strengths, the weaknesses of every player or the top players on every team that we, we played before. And, and that never happened before. Um, when we have to go through set pieces or whatever we need to do during the game, you know, it's all done on a, a screen where his son will 
tell us you have to go there, calling your name and letting you know where you have to go. And you've seen this visually on a board. You know, um, just the, the technological aspect of the game he brought and made it different for us because we have never experienced that. And, and that, look, we've been playing football since 14 and never been exposed to something like that. And, and the way that they broke down the game, broke down and ass assess each player on every team or the, or the 11, it was amazing to us and it helped us tremendously. I, his, his attention to details was second to none. And, um, you know, that, that helped us a lot. And the one thing, you know, again, I said he came there with no ego. He would he would approach us or, uh, you know, approach a couple of the senior players and ask their, their opinion or perspective on certain on certain situations. Like, for instance, I remember um, one of the games, he's like, after we, we already beat uh, Haiti, we draw with the U.S., now all we have to do is, is win or probably draw against Guatemala. And he's like, I don't think I'm going to start this player because she's not doing what I want to want her to do. Right? Uh, what do you think? And those things, it has coaches before would ask your opinion, but do they go, do they take it? They just, or, or throw it away or leave it, you know? And and I was like, Coach Man, yeah, this we have a great momentum going right now. I uh, think this is not the time to to do that, right? And then time when you see the players on the board, he, he when he, he left the player, let her play and say if she doesn't do what does doesn't do what you want her to do, you know, you take her off. But I just don't think so. I just think he took everyone's perspective at heart and decide whether if it was better than his own, he would go with it, or if not. He, he go with whatever decision he has to be um he has to make also the final game he's like this, this is a certain team he call uh, the senior players he would call and say this is the certain team for for tomorrow and mm -hmm. then well it's six years old mainly you can call names and thing now you know but go ahead yeah uh, he, <laughs> he comes back and say you know what I'm going to start this player instead. As I coach, whatever decision you make, we, we all for it. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? So things like that, you, you could only respect. And one of the biggest things we respect Randy Walton for is that he stood up for us without fear of contradiction. And when a, when a coach values his players, they'll go out there and die for him on a football field. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the main things. We went out there and, and play not only for our country and for the program, but for, for him, because he, he, he stood up for us when no one else did. Mm -hmm. Barney, what do you think about the democratic selection of the, of the team? That's, that's usual at all? Well, every coach has his or her own style. Um, I'm listening to Meili there and, and Coach Waldron um, obviously had an inclusive um, approach with the ladies. Um, that may have worked with that group. It may not work with another group. He may tweak it. And there's coaching is, you know, coaching is your experience that you bring to each situation. So it worked for Meili and they, um, because from what I'm hearing from Meili, um, the, the group bought into to supporting Coach Waldrum. What I will point though, it is not necessarily an even playing field in comparing a local coach um, doing that. Our association has a way of rolling out the red carpet um, for foreign coaches and tying the hands of local coaches. So the technology... Well, I'm yeah, not going to explain. The, the technology... There's the, there's the Y right there from Millie. Yeah, yeah. That's the for the example. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the no, technology... No, no, so, no, no, no. You get away with anything, Millie. No, no, no. I just went and point out... I went and point out one thing. So the, okay. the technology that Coach Waldron brought to the table with you guys, Coach Waldron came from the U.S., would have had access to scouts 
and and his his network that he would have built right his formal and informal network with other coaches because randy waldron is a well-traveled coach in the u.s so he would have been able to get that information on the other teams he would have done his homework kudos to him not taking anything away from him there but a coach from trinidad trying to do the same would have to rely on the association and therein is where the problem would would happen for a local coach in that instance now i'm only pointing out that eh? The other things that you spoke about, I can't speak about. That is your experience with him, and, and i in total agreement with what you said about that. But I'm just looking, when you were talking about it, I was thinking about, you know, if I was in the same position, would I have that information? Because I love technology. Lasana, not so much, but Lasana <laughs> could tell you. But, that when I am which, doing work, I like to do which, those which things. One is, which one is Barney and which one is... <laughs> that, that birdie over there. The intelligent one is Barney. The you intelligent keep your guessing, one is keep your guessing, The intelligent but, one is Barney, me. Jeffrey, <laughs> come on. Mm -hmm. We have internet, right? So you're talking about technology mm -hmm. and, and breaking down games and... No, 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 not the breaking down the games, you know. A anybody could, I, could do that. What I'm talking about... So what, oh. what I'm talking about is the information... To get to put together those things um, tie in, in a timely state and with all the information that you need on players. So, like, for example, i just speaking arbitrarily here. But if I am coaching you and we're playing against the U.S., for example, we're playing against Canada, and um, they are, they are one of the players on the left side is, is, is one of the stronger players, I would like to know, for example, all right, she left-footed, what happens can I see games when we put her on her right foot, when we force her inside? What happens? What does she do? How, how does her, her, her decision-making work then? Those sort of things, those details, I am sure Coach Waldron, because again of his network, he could tap into not just those things you wouldn't just pick up on the internet, but those things I could call this other coach that I know from Canada and this one and that one and get that information. And there's nothing wrong with that. I salute him on that. That is being thorough and that is being detailed. A local coach, I'm saying a local coach in Trinidad trying to get the same details would have to rely on support from the association to get some of that information. And that won't be forthcoming. That won't be forthcoming. We we, we know that. So I'm not so taking a, I'm not taking so a, I'm not taking away anything from Coach Waldron, you know. I am I am backing what you're saying. I'm just saying that in some instances it it is not a, a level playing field. That's what I would say. I just think that some of the coaches are not, um, how to say? Technolo technologically savvy. Oh, well, yeah, we, we don't even need to go into that. <laughs> like that. You know, <laughs> don't have to dress it up, eh, you know? you can It's like, for instance, hit them right, right between the eyes, maybe. Right between the eyes. <laughs> for instance, I remember playing for a coach, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hey, watch now. It have a, it have, it have exemptions. I think nobody can come for you. You'll call Let names. Nobody you. can come for you. <laughs> Let me tell you, right? Mm -hmm. And he's coming the day of the game to tell me he thinks I am hurting, so he will not start me today. Mm -hmm. Not once he went to the doctor, to the physio, to myself, and say, merely, could you give me five minutes or could you give me ninety minutes? But you're telling me you, I look like I am hurting. You have a good eye. That, I think that is crazy to Coaches me. eye. Coaches eye. Coaches always have an eye. Right? You check the GPS. This is, this, that is crazy to me. So come and tell me the real reason why or, or why you're not playing me. Because that is not a, a good reason to, to just watch me and say, I, you hurting so yeah. You didn't have asked me a question. You, you wasn't smiling, Mealy. You need to smile. Did, he didn't more. ask me the why. He didn't ask me the <laughs> why you're limping or why you look like you're with nothing of the sort. Yeah. So it just I trust me, it's a huge difference and, and I feel it for you know for me, you know, they always say that um yeah, the white man and and, and you all play hard and it has nothing to do with that because it have no coach in Trinidad and Tobago or no coach who I've ever played for could say I ever short change them when I ever go on a football field. You understand what I'm saying? So it has nothing to do with with white, black or he's foreign or, or what. Once I'm on football field, I, I'm telling you I'm give I will give everything that I have. 
on a on a on a football field. So don't come and tell me about or oh, let us give more to this one. No, it's all it's just the way you approach your professionalism. And you know, I don't know. It it's just it's just a huge gap. It's a huge gap. Mm-hmm. Well maybe we're gonna come back to that twenty fifteen campaign, I, I assure you. But um, <laughs> let, let's go a little bit further back now into your own background in football. You know, tell us how you got mm-hmm. started in this game in the first place. What your development was like as a player. Where did it start? Where did it start? Hmm. For me, uh, well, I, I attended St. Agnes Anderkin Primary School. Um, right by my house. It all, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it all started there, you know. Um, I first I first started with um track and field. Okay. And then I would not have thought it, but go then, ahead. You know enough to <laughs> Yes. I used to I used to like the I used to like the stadium on fire. Until yeah, sprinter I, or, or long I, longer distance. Everything. Okay. Everything. Long jump, everything. Okay. And um I track and field was just like on on in summer times, your your family going on long vacations, and you you have to literally go and train every single day for track, and mm. that was it. But with the, with the football, um, Mr. Batiste, mentor Batiste, he he was a teacher at St. Agnes, and Mr. Tomasas, and they just took us one time to. Mr. Tomasos was our PE teacher, and they took us to to um, Mandela Park. No, Mandela yeah. Park. George V. At that point, as you meant. Yes. yes. George died. and you know, I just started to play, and from there, you know, I played with the with the boys team. Was the best player on the team at that. Was there a girls team, or was it just one team? No, no. Wrong that time. It wasn't any girls team. So yeah. I played. I played with the boys for. From from eleven, from ten eleven, at, mm. and we played we played in the in the infirmary, which is where we call the poor house in mm-hmm. St. James. Mm-hmm. And against the uh Mokrapo boys, St. Crispins, Cookerit. You know, so you know, that is where I started in the poor house. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it was great memories back then playing um you know, playing with the boys. And after you know, primary it, school, what, what was the next step? So from there, I am um, Mr. Hope. God bless his soul. He, um, you know, he 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 was part of our cookery team, and he, he saw me playing, and he's like, "Yeah, come and play with this team." And we play. I played in the Savannah League with them, and then he he took me. I was thirteen or fourteen when I first started to play with females, and he took me out to carry dog stingrays at the time. He won the mm. best women's club or team to ever play in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm. And from there, I was introduced to, to Jamal Shabazz and the national team. Mm. Okay. And, you know, the rest is history. So, it- so that was at, at, at age 14, you um, went under the wings of, of Jamal Shabazz? Right and well, Jamal and well, Carrie Doctor and Rashid, Rashid, um, Rashid. He, he passed away, but yeah. Um, who used to work here, City? To the ledge, eh? Oh no! All right. One question: <laughs> in in your games before, between eleven to fourteen, you ever came up against another team that had a girls player? You ever saw, or was it strictly um, boys? Did. In primary school, they literally banned me from playing in the Savannah League. There was like no girls allowed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How did you how did you yeah. respond to that? What did you think of that? <laughs> no, I played I was pretty good, so I'm assuming I they thought I was too good to play there. You know? <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah, I played in the in the um well Flagstaff used to be, uh PSA um, ground. PSA, yeah. Mm-hmm. PSA, right. Uh, MVP, everything there in primary school. Playing against the likes of um, Nelson Street Boys. Played against Akim, all of them. So, you know, it was fun times um, 
with with my development, you know. Um, but I don't think I came up. I don't. I don't think I came up against any girls. Mm. Okay, because I remember seeing uh, yourself and and Tasha Saint Louis at around that time, I guess, when you would have been around right. fourteen or something. It, we played. We played at Carry Ducks together. We mm-hmm. we played. We grew up playing with Carry Ducks and into the national team. And I assume Tasha would have a similar story. She was really, really good. I mean, at, at that age, Tasha was yes, swinging in Tasha, corner kicks and that correct, some, yes, a lot yes, of boys Tasha. her age couldn't do. Her technique was that good. Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. Um, and, but in terms of that development, because um, I think even, even now, you, you have, let's see, the Republic Bank Youth League, for instance, and so on, and the, the Eddie Hart mm-hmm. League. I don't think any of them had any girls allowed or had any girls teams per se, you know? Um, yeah, well, at a point in time, the the um, Republic Bank, I played I played once in Republic Bank. But with a boys team? League. But with a boys no, team? with, with that girls. girls. Team? Yeah, that, okay. that girls, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, they, they haven't had that for a while either, you know? Mm-hmm. I'd like to hear more in terms of, of, well, how girls, what are we doing really to develop, um, you know, footballers at that age in, in Trinidad? Yep. It, there seem to be so many opportunities for boys to get started. And not right. the same for girls, you know. The, the thing about it, listening to Mealy and, and Mealy's story, you will hear Mealy's story echoed in a number of the, the women who are in the, you know, the same squad that she was on. It it, basic, it basically um, follows the road of playing with boys, playing with men, and, and developing yourself there to a certain point. And then you get, your, your, you know, you join other girls. But we um yeah. do you think I think what Lasana wanted to ask is is do you think we are on the right road for female development now or even in your case? Uh, in fact, well, is it better or is it worse? You could even um probably start there. Uh it's uh it, it's tough, you know, the lack of development is excruciating, <laughs> you know, because for many years we have been neglected to invest in any developmental program, you know, and today we are suffering the consequences of it. Mm-hmm. And it needs to be restructured from, from growing up. Primary mm-hmm. school, you know, it is the level of play. And then, too, at that level, you don't have true coaching taking place, right? Mm-hmm. So, for instance, I've, I've, when I was back home some years ago, I used to follow St. Agnes, right? And I used to, you know, look around and observe what was happening. And you see that coaches were just focused on winning, mm-hmm. literally just winning. So you would take the standard fours and standard fives, and play them all the time. So standard one, two, and three are being, being neglected because there's no U10, U9 program at primary school level. Is either U12 or U15. Mm-hmm. Just imagine having a U15 program in primary school. Mm-hmm. That's not making any sense, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's not making no absolutely no sense. And I remember speaking to the president Mr. Johnson, nice guy. Mm-hmm. But again, <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad the way it's set up because again, the standard one, two, and three, there's no, nothing, nothing uh, is in place for them to develop. Mm-hmm. Because why? When season come, they're not getting to play because the coaches rather go with the bigger boys to get a result. Mm -hmm. And then they're taking those same U12 players and playing them U15. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You understand what it is I'm saying to you? They're Mm -hmm. taking those same U12 players and playing them U15 Mm -hmm. in primary school. Mele, I think we could could all agree that um, Trinidad and Tobago has no... I don't know Foresight, idea no, no, of development, yeah, or we have no no real desire 
to properly put in place a developmental structure. Um, Correct. What, what you're saying there is the same things that I have seen at um, on, on the boys' side in, in even in, in secondary schools, how, how, how we, we go about things, even in the tournaments, the, the Republic banks and, and all, the, all this stuff. But um, I remember you, you, you said that you were, were um, you know, looking around at St. Agnes. I remember you doing more than that. I, I remember if the boy's name comes to me, Theo, I think. Yeah, Theo, right, yeah, yeah. Your, your yeah. Eye, that, that's actually it's first time, general. yeah, first time mm-hmm. outside of the national structure that I really saw you and took notice of you. The, 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 mm-hmm. the, um, the, what's the correct word? The, the energy and the effort you put into trying to, you know, to put, to get this boy who was obviously talented to, to right. develop his, his talents, the, the, the support that I saw you coming at games. I actually thought it was your son at a point in time. <laughs> <laughs> so tell, tell us something about, about, about you passing on, you know, what, 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 what was the, what was the desire there? Was it to, to you know, um, just so an, F, an, an an opportunity to help somebody? What was it? Well, for me, I understand the importance of sports and what football did for me. You know, the opportunity it created, and I, I know how, it, you know, it, it's very um emotional for me for the mere reason that. I, I grew up in the ghetto, you know, um, and the odds were against me. And I used football as a vehicle to to gain betterment. And seeing someone like like young Tio with that talent and understanding of the game, it drove me to uh, well, outside of me being an alumni of, of St. Agnes and the love that I have for, for St. Agnes for what they 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 um give to me, you know, I just want to be able to give back and to to players or, or to young men and young women who, you know, in love with the game and just to show them and, and let them understand that this this little ball that you're seeing that you're kicking and running wrong with that you love could take you places you never dream of. Take you out of situations that you, you think you can't get out of, you know, and for me, that is really imperative to me. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about those achievements, Meli. You, you might think it's, it's boastful, but in truth, what you'll be doing is you'll be telling players um, what they could target, what they could aim to achieve. So, so tell us where football took you and what it got for you. Oh, um, man, it, around the world. It took me around the world, right? Places that I never I dreamt of. Um, you know, I, I learn about life with, with a ball on my feet. That's all I ever known is football, right? Um, and without it, I really can't say where I would be today. Um, and it helped in terms of me, your U.S. education and you, you went to school in the States as well? Correct, correct. I'm not going to touch on that. I, I was someone that failed common entrance, mm-hmm. right? I honestly believe that the system failed me. And I just liked school after that. Mm-hmm. And then I got an opportunity, you know, God sent an angel in Eric, um, Derek Arno. Mm-hmm. And I got an opportunity to, to, to finish my 12th grade, one year of, one year of um, 12th grade in, in, in the United States. And I took that opportunity and never looked back. You know, I... Graduated from high school, got a scholarship to go college, and graduated from university with a, a bachelor's degree in sports management. And I'm here now. What university was that? Kennesaw State University. Okay, excellent. In Georgia. <laughs> but mainly things like this, you supposed to be look look. I know you, and look, I know fine now. This about you. I just thought you just right. wanted to kill me all the time. I, I didn't realize that, you know. <laughs> you had to walk around with the college shirt a little bit yeah, more, really, you know? maybe. The, 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 and I, I'm, so being, yeah, I'm being serious here. In all my football or all my success, my, one of my biggest accomplishments 
you know, was graduating from from college, you know, after not after failing common entrance and being able to have a bachelor's degree in sports management, it just showed that, you know, you, you put your mind to anything, you could accomplish it. Yeah, and this is something, this is what I'm, I'm about to say, this is something that you're supposed to be trumpeting. I had to come here today to find out about this. This is something as soon as you, you, <laughs> you may, you know, I'm being serious now. You are the a former national captain with this sort of mm-hmm. story. You're supposed to be talking in schools, going back to schools, going to, to what we should, what we call hotspots and talking to people. Yeah, and, I and, agree. I've and, done, yeah. done it in some, in some places. I've done it before, but I'm not always home, you know, mm-hmm. so it's mm-hmm. kind of different. I've made it to be fair to you. If, if Barney is a couple hundred meters behind you and, and, and Chancellor, how is he gonna hear the story, Mel? Yeah, yeah, you have to go a little bit slower for him, maybe. You know, I really don't know. All kind of thing until he starts to run like home. Hey, Mel, let me stay with you. Let me stay with you, Tina. Don't don't go down. Don't go down that avenue with this fella. No, Mel, I wonder though, right? And the difference with the men's and the women's team, where the the women seem to be always more open to articulate views and so on. Now, I don't know if that mm-hmm. might just be because of yourself, maybe. I think probably you were the one articulated <laughs> views all the time. <laughs> but yeah. I always wonder if because of the women's players, you know, they always generally try to get a scholarship in the States. So generally speaking, yeah. you have people with that sort of educational background, whereas the men's footballers oftentimes look to head to a professional contract as soon as they can. I always wonder if, if, if that was part of the the difference in terms of um, the way you all weren't afraid of the media and sharing your views, let's say. Well, I'm not sure why guys do not like to speak out because they, not to say they get the best or the greatest of treatments as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I think some of them try to protect themselves because you know when you speak truth to power, what happens? I am a prime example of what happens when you speak truth to power. And Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I I know what I have given to the women's program, the sacrifices that I made to represent Trinidad and Tobago, and I'm good with that. It's just unfortunate that when you do speak up and, and, and speak up for justice, for simple things that, that is needed for us to be successful, because we are being treated poorly, you get blacklisted or you know mm-hmm. they they look at you in a certain way so certain things you 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 can't be part of so it, it's tough so i understand why especially on the men's team because in order to play in certain leagues you have to have certain amount of caps mm-hmm. and, and and that's what the teams out there look at for us women Maybe now, but back in the day, um, school was the route. School was what you, 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 it didn't have much for women in the women's game where you could make a living off of it like the men's. So they had to protect themselves from being backlisted. Now you see someone like Joven and they're speaking up because why? They're coming down to the end of the career. They don't really business what what you all do now because mm. they they already enjoy a, a decent career and in, in, in their minds so they could speak up now mm-hmm. so i think it, it just weighs on because of what is needed in men's game is different from the women's game changing the focus a little bit maybe um what is i have an idea but i i'm not maybe at johnson um, <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, uh, and the world grateful for that too. Yeah, <laughs> I think she's a little better looking than me. <laughs> just, just a little, just a little. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what What is your proudest moment in a Trinidad and Tobago um, shit? Proudest moment. Um, obviously, that that run we made in twenty fourteen. Mm-hmm. Um. Is there you any know, one one game, one particular um, moment that stands out among the others? I would say uh, probably the Haiti game, due mm-hmm. to the fact that we were, we were down 10 players 
for a very long time in that game. And we fought like lions, you know. We fought, we fought, we fought until that final whistle. Mm -hmm. And we knew once we beat Haiti, we would have taken care of business against Guatemala. And, um, you know, just the way we fought in that game was outstanding. Um, you have young... Um, forgot how the goalkeeper that came in for Palmer. Mm -hmm. You had Palmer come in for, for Kamika, and she was awesome, mm -hmm. you know? And just to see that, that everybody gave everything they had in that game to come out with a victory... It was amazing. And just that entire run, the way that we changed the perspective and views of people um, when it comes to women's football in our country. Mm -hmm. Now, we were Caribbean champs in, in, in that period, of course, you know. Um, now, Haiti has, has, what do you say, gone past us in the women's game and, and then it's Jamaica just went to Women's World Cup. How, how do you feel looking in the Caribbean now and seeing... <laughs> you know, us no longer at that pinnacle where we were when you were playing? Well, if we get in beaten by St. Kitts, you know, we just become the laughing stock of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. You know, no disrespect to St. Kitts because they were always... got they, they, Over the years, St. Kitts have always been that one team that kept improving. Mm -hmm. But to me, I didn't believe they improved that much to where they blow us out for one or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, but again, it goes back to putting coaches in positions that do not belong there. It's simple as. You think it has more to do with, with coaches as opposed to our player pool or so? Mm, nope, nope. Look, for instance, right? Why it is in that under 20 tournament we had back home, we went up against all those teams in our group every single game. The talent is there. The talent is there. I can I guarantee you the talent is there. Mm -hmm. How you hone and harness that talent and prepare that talent is a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Especially with, in that St. Kitts tournament. Again, when you don't pick your best players, that is what's going to happen. When you allow people who have never kicked a, a lime in their life or shed an uh, ounce of blood, sweat, or tears for their country, the, let tell demand you not to pick certain players, you fail as a coach already. So it, it was doomed from the start. I feel you're referring to somebody in particular, mainly. No, well, the coach in that tournament was whom? That would be Mr. Defu? Correct. Wh which and, player? And, uh, which player was blacklisted? And one or two players who, one or two coaches who came after. So, do you know any of the blacklisted players, Millie? Excuse? Do you know any of the blacklisted players? I know, uh, I, I know myself. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? You sure? No, you, only on talking terms? You on yourself? <laughs> yeah, like Mullins and they, mm -hmm. you know. When you see, t come on, we don't already, as you said, the pool of. The pool of players is already so small, mm -hmm. right? And then you have a coach that comes in and decides, you know what? These players, I am not picked. What is the reason why he didn't pick his best players? That Those are the questions that need to be asked when you don't see the players who give their blood, heart, and soul to the country. And then you come to a tournament and you're not seeing one or two of them or three of them. Mm -hmm. These are the questions the media, when interviewing these men, needs to ask. And, and, and you all don't. <laughs> so, wait now. Go, go back and ban it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so media mogul here didn't ask those questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently not. <laughs> no, nah, man, maybe and we same way, put the I man guess. in place now, nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> the media is very weak. <laughs> and I, I could never respect that. I, I can't respect those coaches who come in and, and allow a president or whomever to dictate who you pick on a national. There's a national team. You are representing 100, 1, 1.5 million people and you, you want to come in there 
and decide who should or shouldn't be on a national team because of a president who don't like the players. Mm. No, it's hmm. that very unfortunate. Well, history tends to repeat itself, so right. we may go down that road at some point in time again. Um, I'm, I'm sure. I'm we... hoping. I'm hoping that this time around. But the programs the... will continue. So yeah, but well, yes, they will. And and the media has an important role. Um so I'm hoping that the media <laughs> I, I nobody not talking about about um, I hope myself. It, but... I hope the media <laughs> um this, does does its job. This isn't a bootleg um fearless one over here. Right, right. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I hear yeah. <laughs> so maybe going back now mm-hmm. to, to that happier time, the 2015 campaign. I believe Mr. Waldrum came here just before the Caribbean leg. Yeah, That's correct? just before. Mm-hmm. All right. You know, talk to me about, in terms of the, the team chemistry, uh, I remember for that tournament, um, yeah, you had a little heart scare or something like that. The people, everybody was getting to know each other, really, between the coaches mm-hmm. and the players. Uh, in fact, I believe uh, Waldrum's son came first, right? Ben and Randy uh, missed the think- first game, something like that. I believe so, yeah. What was that period like anyway um, at the start? Did you all, um, was it it's, love at first sight or did it take a little while to, to work each other out? With Randy and they, you, well, you have to remember Randy and they, Randy came years ago before that, right? True, okay. So he knew some of the players. Mm-hmm. He coached, he coached um, Mariah Shade and they at the tournament back home. But I, did, I did he believe. coach you? No, he never coached me. No. Okay. No. Mm-hmm. No. But um I mean the the I would say it was tough for the fact that they just got rid of Marlon. Mm-hmm. Um and you know, when 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 that happens, you have a group of player who is in support of the move and you have a group of player who's not in support, so it had that tension, mm-hmm. but it never spilled out on the field, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so that is why I said when when they brought in the psychologist, you know, um, Doctor Motley, yeah. Margaret Motley, Utley, mm-hmm. Motley Utley, Doctor Margaret Utley. But that would have been and in the Concacaf stage. But go on. Well, that's what I'm saying. So she did a very good job of bringing us together. But as again, at that first period, it was it, it had a little bit of tension due to the fact that a group was in support of the move and a group wasn't in support of the move. So mm-hmm. Coach Randy had us to come in and, you know, make sure that we we all on the same page and we have the same goals and aspirations and you know again it didn't spill out over on the field and and that was a nice tournament to win mm-hmm. so we fought really hard against um jamaica to win that game and become the champions no i remember there were two bits of friction with the with the fa i think one would have been you all had a camp in Petrotrin. was that before the concord mm-hmm. tournament or that was before I, the playoff just try to forget these things and so I don't need to yeah, like a horror before. movie like a horror movie <laughs> you're, you're on the couch right now maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. no well I'm just I'm not talking about before or after so we, you will know memories. better because you brought it up <laughs> we're I, visiting memories right now maybe I don't forget about that ghost of Christmas past <laughs> yeah you might forget it maybe what but happened we, we have to bring it back so, up for you but so in <laughs> Petrochen I remember in Petrochen, Randy Waldrum had a, put a tweet out or something like that, you know, um, I think criticizing the facilities and he was, you know, asked, I guess, to apologize, which he did, you know. Uh, and then, of course, we had the, 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 the more famous one when, um, right. you know, the women's team went to the States Play tournament. Um, mm-hmm. There was no funding there. There wasn't even money for breakfast on the next day, I understand. And, and Randy right. puts out a message asking for well wishers to, to help the team. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that one sparked <laughs> a storm. Yeah, but, 
Tell me about everything that was going on there behind the scenes at that point in time and what were the players making of all of this sudden attention? Well, for us, we saw it as our coach standing up for us. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, I I was in there initially because mm -hmm. I got my visa late, so I went up the next day, I believe. Yeah, and I remember asking you when you said that this happens all the time. That was something like that you had said. <laughs> you see? How you remember all this? <laughs> but anyway... So yeah, when we went over there, I mean, it was nothing about love. I, I, it was nothing about love from from every corner of Houston mm -hmm. or Dallas or wherever it was, you know. Um, and then, you know, it had a GoFundMe page where um, Coach Coach Randy raised a lot of money, which the players got received. Um, but there were so many things that they sent where. You know, time to leave to go to the tournament that, you know, we had to give away things. That's how much things we, we, we got. Yeah, and so how did that, in terms of the, the togetherness, because you spoke about different little riffs before, was that something that, that kind of united the team? And, and and what was the relationship like it between definitely the FA? Us a bit closer. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely brought us a bit closer and... Um, you know, it definitely brought us a bit closer because, uh, you know, we understood. I think that was a slap in the face to not send the team with with any kind of money. Mm -hmm. um, so we were just rallying behind Coach Randy for, mm -hmm. for the most part, you know. We were just rallying behind him, supporting him. And, you know, we, 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 we weren't getting sidetracked or by by those disturbances we we had a goal at hand which was to to qualify and and that never changed that never changed throughout that whole scenario so it was like uh you, you all had a siege mentality going on it was like you all and coach randy versus the rest of the world trinidad you, you felt that the, the fa yeah, had left you out on a limb we, we this never happened to us before you know all these times coaches accepted whatever the federation give mm -hmm. provided or didn't provide and we have this guy this coach coming in and you know standing up without fear of contradiction um he was done doing it for free so you, you, you're gonna fire you're gonna fire him so it was just like mm -hmm. you know just standing up behind someone who respected and 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 that's it in a weird way with the response to that message from from randy waldrum did that make the women players feel like you know yeah actually we do deserve better than we have been getting and yes we are more special than I, our fa thinks we are was that the I, thing? Um, I told them that a long time i remember when sheldon Phillips first came on board as the general second or not and i told him i said i said sheldon you all need to put everything behind the women's program. I said the quickest way to a World Cup is through the women's program, right? And I told him all the reasons why. I said over the years, we always come to it in a group because we be in place with either America and Mexico or Canada and Mexico. And now, one of them is out of the group, which was Canada. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a, a very good chance of going through to the next round and either getting that playoff spot and whatnot. So I broke it down all the reasons why. And, you know, why can't we not be the flagship team? Because they, they came into a meeting with us and told us the men are the flagship team and this, that, and the other. And, you know, you know, I I let them know how I what I think and how I see things. Um and yeah, so I told them that a long time through the women's game and I always told the players that the Greatest way to give up power is not knowing that they have it. And we have all the power. We have all the power as players to stand up together. If we don't play, football can foot, football cannot continue the way they're treating us. You understand? So, but again, a lot of players, you know, fearful, um, not strong enough to take certain stands. And 
That is, even in the men, the bo- the men and the women's game, that's how it is. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have a half, half bunch of players who are ready to stand, stay the course, and then a bunch of players who decide, boy, all you're on all your own. Now remember now for the trip to Ecuador. This time the women stood up for themselves, right? Was it that trip when you all um said you're not going on the plane unless you get uh per diem and so on? No, I think that was for a Pan American Games. Pan American Games, okay, okay. But that, that I believe so. Yeah. American games. Mm-hmm. Now, once you all got to the to the big four, right? The semi-final mm-hmm. round. It, it we got to a stage where we needed one one win out of well, two then before the playoff. Mm-hmm. Um right. what what was the, the pressure like on the, the players and how did you all deal with it? Well again, Dr. Utley, she did an amazing job helping us learn how to block out the noise, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we went into all those games confident that we could come out with a victory. Mm-hmm. Over the years, Mexico have beaten us, Costa Rica as well. And, you know, we played against Costa Rica the first game, I believe, and we ended up losing on penalties. Mm-hmm. And this keep on you every... Again, you see how these these countries conduct themselves. Just keep on you every player and where they like to hit the ball in a penalty. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. And that was it. That was the end of yeah. that game. <laughs> yeah. That was literally the end of that game. We went into the Mexico game, same thing. Like you know, Coach Randy, he knew the American team really well. But he knew the Mexican team twice as twice as good. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, we went down one nil against Mexico and then at halftime, coach said, Ladies, don't worry. He made certain adjustments. He said if we do this, that, the other, we're gonna go up two one. You could tell us we're now. Really. Score and then- you could tell us now, Excuse? Mexico can't do anything with the information. What what, what did he tell you all to do? No, well, uh, yeah, actually, I I don't Forget 2014 long time. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. You know, um, you know, and just he said you're gonna equalize. He literally said you're gonna equalize and go up to one. So said, so done. Maybe 15 or 12 minutes into the game, we up to one. When we scored, I'm just holding my head like, you know, because when we scored, I think she had scored. Mm-hmm. And everybody, Tasha, they run on the field as though the game is over. And mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know the worst or the most vulnerable time after uh, when a goal is scored is, is after when they touch off. And that was it, the touch off. <laughs> they touch off, go down the line, send the ball down the line, bring it over, boom, goal. Mm-hmm. So we were just emotionally drained when the equalized. And we end up losing for two in that game. Yeah. In extra, extra time. time. Extra time. Right? Yeah, in extra time. Yeah. One more thing I remember about that um, big four. Um, Mexico, when they played America, decided that they had no chance. So they rested the entire first team. And mm-hmm. of course, Trinidad had a strong team against Costa Rica. So when the third place playoff came with you all against Mexico, Trinidad would have been a little bit more leg weary, whereas the Mexican team was uh, was fresher. What do you think about yeah. that, um, Barney? That strategy. Well, we, what was it? What was the time in between the games? Uh, what was it different? What was it? What was the um like the time days. between the games mainly? You can remember. What in, maybe two two games in between two, two games. days in between. Yeah, well, that that can that can make a difference there because you you ideally want seventy two hours between games to properly recover. So, if Mexico you, is resting, you have to, mm-hmm. you understand the US have extreme depth right, in their and, team. And we don't have that. We we right? don't have that. And we going in against Costa Rica. We thought we have a better chance against Costa Rica than and we Mexico. did against Mexico, yeah. right? Okay. So we we going all out. We. Yeah. We're not studying who after rest and, and, and how much days and these things. We're going all out. You, you know, you put your strongest team on on the field and see who wins. What mm-hmm. killed us as well in a Mexico game, we are Belgrave wasn't able to play because of, um, I guess, 
I'm not sure if it was yellow cards. So she was unable mm-hmm. to play the Mexico game. Mm. Right. Right? So, that so that was difficult. I, I mean, a lot of people, you know, I think um, Rhea Belgrave and, and um, Erin King complement each other. And mm. one without the other really do not look as good when they're together. Yeah. So... Mm-hmm. Okay, and and then we have uh, Ecuador. No, I, I I made that trip with you all. I remember, yeah. of course, going up in the in the altitude, and I mean, it, everything was against us, and it became out with a real hard fought um draw. Uh, you were excellent in that game, I must say. Um, talk about Thanks. talk about that challenge, the, the two legs against Ecuador, and and you know how it played off. Well, where this thing for me, it, it re- I didn't feel the difference that some of the players were feeling in terms of the altitude. You know, um, I think Akila and 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 that's uh, Akila and um, Yaya, who've been two of our best players in that tournament, they felt the altitude. It it, it took a toll on them. You know, it took a toll on a lot of the players, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we still managed to come out with a draw where most people say when once you go in there, it's like a, it's like a it's like death, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you ain't sure to come out. You ain't sure <laughs> to come out with a victory or even a point. Um and we did well enough to come out with a point. Because when you think about it, we 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 were the better team. You know, I we were the better team on paper, on field, but again, sometimes the better team don't always win. Yaya went up, scored a goal, and literally they call a foul for her on the keeper, you know. And I think I was unfortunate, but we had our moments in that game, but not as much as went leading up to, to in that tournament. Mm-hmm. The type of performances we had in that tournament, that first game, you know, we did enough to come away with a point. Mm-hmm. And then... The- in Port of Spain, over 20,000, I think it was something like 22,000 people. It has to be a, a, a record for a local women's game, you know? Right. What was the, the feeling at, before that game, all the euphoria and so on? How did it, did it affect the team at all? How did you sleep? I mean, not not at all, you know? It didn't affect us. Um, again, we knew what winning this game would do for us in our careers, in our life, personal life, everything. That would change, change a lot for us. So that was our main focus. Um, we wanted to create history, be part of history. So we, we, we were just ready to play, you know. I think the, the, the amount of time between the two games, you know, it was too much, yeah, pretty much. Three weeks or something like <laughs> you that. Know? Yeah, it was just too much, right? And um, for us, I think one of the biggest thing that that when in, in retrospect and when looking back was not being able to to play any games leading up to that, where they were able to to still you know get stay sharp and get some match fitness. Mm. Um, and that was the biggest thing. Um, when I, and I, when I when I say that because we were able to go to to um, the games, I forget what games you call that. Um, was it the, the it was it the Panam games? Was it? No, the one before that. Mm. CAC. For, was it? CAC games, right? Mm. We were able to go to the CAC games, but you know the staff, the technical staff had a a very difficult decision to make whether to go to the games because we had injured players. We had players who let have literally seen players have to take injection in their toe in order to play. You yeah. know, so it it was difficult. Do we go and play in that tournament and get games, some games in? Or do we just come back home and they get one or two because this, I was told that you know the the general sack at the time would have gotten games against Venezuela for us, which never happened. So going into that game, we really didn't play much football in terms of being able to finish 
And that was our biggest problem in that game, finishing. Mm. The goal that scored on us was literally a ghost goal. Mm-hmm. No one touched that ball. I mean, when you watch that, I still see it. I still have nightmares about that, mm-hmm. <laughs> about that goal. I just watch it like the, this goal really went in. You know, so I just think the preparation leading up to that one game, even though we had we, we were fit because we we had a we had a program for that. But the football aspect of the game, I don't care how much training you do with finishing and stuff. If you don't, if you can't do it and replicate it in a game like situation, time for the game time is going to be tough. That's correct. Let me ask you something, Mili. Half time in that game, what was the feel in the mm-hmm. dressing room? Did you start to feel the pressure of, you know, we, at- we, it's nil nil at home? If they score one, we'll be in trouble because on your way goals, even if you equalize, they would have gone through, right? So what, yeah. what, what, what was the Except feeling? Honestly speaking, mm-hmm. I had no doubt that we are going to be this team because I, I truly believe we were the better team, right? And, and, and I the think team, defensively. The, the, entire hmm? team fe- the, the entire team felt, um, shared that feeling at, you know, in the dressing room and everything. Yeah, when, they, when they looked in the teammates' eyes, yeah, what did you see? You saw that belief? That we could win? Yeah. Yeah, but at no point we thought we, we, we would have lost this game. I'm telling you, because even when you first have anything about it, how many chances they really created, right? We did well defensively to, to a point until, until that goal, um, until that foul in that moment, you know? Football is about moments, and we fouled that player at the wrong time. And at the wrong moment at the game, and they scored a, a ghost goal, literally just keep keep a key out, and it went over Kamika here with nobody touching it. So for me, I that that game was really tough for me because when 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 I asked myself what more could I have done as a leader to come out victorious in that game, you know. Um, and I, I, I take that, I take that on me, you know, that, that game, losing that game. What more could I have done? There's more that I could have done, whatever it was, maybe, um, you know, relinquish my responsibility and holding, holding the midfield itself and not going too much forward and, and making sure the midfield is, is, is compact and solid and everything. Should I have go forward more? Like all these things I question. When thinking mm-hmm. about about that, mm-hmm. and 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 how did you and by wider <clears throat> um, extension the team? How the days after that game? How tough was it? And how did you? You know, what was the, the was there any system support system to help you recover mentally from that disappointment? Well, for me, I um I like to be by myself, right? So. Not much people could have said to me that would have made a different difference in, in that moment and that those following days. I took it to heart, you know. Um and I, I just different from a lot of people. Um you may some people may some people may take um you know, go through it differently. They may go on the avenue and enjoy themselves. Or, you know, you never know. So I can only speak for myself. I I took it. It was heartbreaking for me. Did he... And, you know, I didn't do much. I didn't do much days after. And, you know, I had had some, a few nightmares as well. It, it can't be as bad as working with Lasana. Trust me. <laughs> so, whatever nightmare you had, it 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 is not bad. But yeah, but you have to understand, um, as a as a footballer, as a player, the main goal is to play in a World Cup, right? Mm-hmm. You play you play football, so you know to end up in a World Cup, and um, you had the, the, it was right there, it was right there in our hands, and you know, for whatever reason. We, we we did um it was in our time right I, you, you you want to play at the highest stage and on the, the highest level and the world cup is it i understand oh, that order. totally but let me ask you this i've heard you make mention of um the work that that dr utley did leading up to the game mm-hmm. 
what what was her role, if any, um, after the game? I know you said that you you know you wanted to be by yourself, but do you know mm-hmm. if the if the FA you know um, employed using that loosely, Miss Doctor Hartley, to work with the players to recover because that is the the psychological I'm effect. Not, I can't I can't say mm-hmm. if they did, but you know probably not. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. <laughs> I don't know because but if I have to go off of how they operate, <laughs> nope. Yeah, that's that's sad because that, that, as you said, that's that's the pinnacle for any player. That's where you want to be it right there at yeah. your fingertips, and it didn't happen. And football, we, we had players end up, end up, you know, in the hospital as as I'm sure that was reported, you know. So, you know, for this, you know, you you train your whole life. You dedicate your whole life, your whole career, you sacrifice blood, sweat, and tears, you know, for this one, for your, for this dream of playing in a World Cup. And, you know, it was taken away by 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 one goal. And, you know, it's hard. It, it's anything, anyone going through that would be hard to deal with, but mm. it's how you bounce back from it. Mm. How, how do we get Trinidad women's football back at that level where... We at least being a, a nuisance to the to the top teams in Concacaf or pushing for World Cup spots ourselves. What, what do you think we need to do? Le, le, before you answer that, let me put it another way for you. You, Mailey Atten Johnson, mm-hmm. you in charge of football, women's football. You have a blank slate. What do we do? What do we do to get Trinidad and Tobago as the Santa Arts, um where it needs to be, reaching to our oh, women's World Cup? We need to invest heavily in, in in the developmental program and from a young age straight up to the senior programs. Um if you truly serious about sports, you will, in order to compete with the best, you have to invest like the best, right? You have to invest like the best. So that is something that that, that we lack. In all sports and all facets of sports in Trinidad and Tobago is the lack of investment in sports, and without it, there's not much we can really do. And for me, we have a great opportunity now because Concacaf has what four automatic spots and two player spots. Mm. If I if I if I recall yeah, I correctly, I, th- I think yeah. you're correct. Mm-hmm. Right, so that comes like six, right? And mm-hmm. come on, man, you telling me that we can be a top six team in Concacaf? Mm-hmm. Well, okay, resources always, well, finite, right? So let's say it we trumps, have. It trumps everything. So let's say we had one million, right? To, mm-hmm. to, to, to put somewhere right now. Where would you put it? Would you put it yeah. in, in um, into widening the pool? Our players at, at youth level, would you put it in the national senior team to camps and so on for this tournament? How how would you how would you use it? Or would you put like it in now? or would you put it in Barney's account? <laughs> I'll give any numbers <laughs> now if you want. <laughs> you <laughs> this know how is that US. <laughs> and it's just general Sana. When you think about that twenty fourteen team, right? Yeah. Karen Forbes, Kamika, Forbes. Victoria Swift, mm-hmm. all these players, they know in 2021 20, are in their prime. Mm-hmm. Outside of myself, Akila Mullen, Tasha St. Louis, yeah. The, Tasha, these other players are in their prime. And then you have the, the young players like um, Afia Cornwall, the Prince. Even the prints that 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 got the contractor going to Brazil, those are good players. This is those Denisha are Prince. Huh? Denisha Prince. Denisha Prince. She's those in Brazil are, now. Those are well, she got her contractor oh. go Brazil. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. To play in the league in Brazil, these are good players that if a proper coach comes in could make very good use of them and they could contribute at a high level for the senior team. Well, of course, a and coach with the resources. 
with the resources exactly. for camps and they games. And... Still, we still have the players to make a, a, a push for this, ca- for this campaign coming up here. This is six spots now, you know. Before mm-hmm. it was three and a half. Now this is six spots. Mm-hmm. So you're saying six fans, spots. you're saying we should get excited. We should be one last hurrah at least. Yeah, well, I, I, you could only get excited if they put the right people in the right places. <laughs> That's the only excitement you can get because I'm telling you, if you go and put Ted from down the road <laughs> to do the thing, it's not going to work. You know, right? you, you know we were getting sponsored from a fellow named Ted and you know, ju- you just go on and <laughs> you go on and destroy the whole... Why you had to pick Ted? <laughs> the whole thing. I was going to ask if Barney have another nickname, Ted. <laughs> But listen, I am. Um, you're getting me excited about uh, uh, about the football, talking about it like that. Um, what Birdie was pointing out, though, is the resources mm-hmm. in terms of t- to get a World Cup. You need to invest not just in the coach, not just in the technical staff, but in the behind the scenes stuff. What you need, the the roadmap, the games that you need to be, need to play, when you need to play them, the camps that you need to go on, the nutrition. The strength training and the everything that you need to do because you trust are correct. me, those other teams doing that. So, so I'm saying this to say that even if they bring Pep Guardiola, <laughs> best coach in the whole wide world, <laughs> or somebody really good like Ole Gunnar <laughs> Solskjaer, if they there. bring Pep Guardiola no, to coach you, woman, or the Pep Guardiola um, equivalent of women of, of, of women coaches. Um, you still need the stuff behind the scene. Do you see us doing those things? I agree with what you just said. I always say that the standard on the field is directly linked to the lack of preparation of the field. The, the decline in our football is as a result of the lack of, again, infrastructure, accountability, and professionalism. And are we willing to, to give up what we're doing now to to do these things and put these things in place in order to see success on the field? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I willing to do my part, but is everyone else in the position willing to do theirs? And as you say that, your part is what? As a player? You think you, 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 you have to be, Meili, you have to be. Let's be honest. You, you want to make that push with that team. No, well, yeah, I started off the um, program with that, right? Mm-hmm. Early on in the past, I said, you know, I still have a passion to play. You know, I, I mean, representing a country for me is everything. And I, I'm i going to be, how old I'm going to be? 35 this year? <laughs> or 34, one of those times? <laughs> yeah, Convenient. Right? Yeah, he's going backwards <laughs> there, <me>. really? <laughs> <laughs> Mealy button. <laughs> Mealy have a reverse age there going on. Benjamin button. Mealy but button. Mealy button. Mealy button. <laughs> Me, you know, it's all about, you know, preparation, um, doing the right things to be ready. If if that is the road that, you know, I w I wanna I wanna um go, which is the play. So I will always be ready. I will never go on a football field and embarrass myself. You know, I know the time, when the time comes for when I have to give it up. You know, I I want people to judge me by my performance and not by my age. Mm -hmm. You know, so I will make sure and do the necessary things that would prepare me to to play an international game and be part of a national team setup. Yeah, well, I, I could speak, you know, I could speak to that, you know, having escaped your attempts to murder me. (laughs) <laughs> and then seeing you, seeing you trying to kill Kai Philip, going up chance the morning after morning, I realized that then and there I knew that you had to be still, you still had that that's unfinished business for you, and and right. I applaud that. Karen is an is is another one that you know. Um, I I really wish that you all could get the right support and structures in place because I think that squad is a very talented squad. Is at the end. Mm-hmm. You're closer to the end than the start, but um, right. it would be great if you know the hey. the resources. And and I keep harping on this because the man on the street tends to think that 
the players who go out, well, that is it. And they don't understand the part that administration and structure plays in getting mm-hmm. any program to its final destination. Um, Correct. So uh, 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 I'm hoping, you know, those things fall in place for you. Mainly, you, were you aware or did you read and listen to the conversation that took place between the captain of the Jamaica na- men's national team and their, ad- and their administration when they were um, I, negotiating for, for match, what, fees. match fees? I think that's right, Gary Saudi Arabia or something. Yeah. yeah. On Andy, on Andy Lowe's son. The, you, you, right. Yeah. You, 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 yeah. Heard, you heard the conversation? You read it or anything like that? Yeah, I think I heard it. All right. Have you, as Skipper, ever been in a position like that where you have been spoken to in such a manner by the administration? Um, no, because, again, <laughs> I guess monkey know what treat the clients. <laughs> so there are moments when I've, I've, you know, you go to the general sec and you realize that things not taking place and he's not taking what you bring to him to the heads that be, right? Mm-hmm. I will go straight to the to the person. In the past, I, I would go and speak with Mr. L- Mr. Um, Tim Key and let him know how I feel about what's going on or what is needed for the team, for the players, what should be done, and, you know, the one thing I respected about him, he never held my perspective, my opinion, and the way that I, I you know, express myself, he never held that against me. And I was able to build a mutual respect with him. And, and that was it. They, what about Mr. They John Williams? Me. What was the mutual respect like with, with Mr. John Williams? He sound kind of eager. The man can wait for to stop talking. <laughs> man jumping. <laughs> Well, when 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 um, Mr. Williams came, in... <laughs> come, don't start, no, don't start, don't start when, now. When, when, what's that? Don't start now. Come talk. When he no 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 no. Let me tell you. When he got he he actually called me. Mm-hmm. He called me. He said he need me to be part of the setup. Um, he he has a the, he he wants to send a team to Brazil. And um, he wants me to lead that team. Obviously, that team would have been pretty much a President Eleven team because mm. most of the players went to, America. to the yeah. right to America. And you, Mister Lasana Limbert, I remember <laughs> messaging you. Really, Limbert, Limbert, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I remember messaging. Yes, I really, I am too minded about this. I really. Thing. You say, you know what, this is a new administration, give them a chance. Remember you telling me that? That sounds like a very wise statement to make. <laughs> right. You <laughs> say, you know, I knew I was the only person that told me that when I asked for advice because yeah. I really didn't. And it wasn't because of him, because yeah. I didn't know him that much at that time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think we were all hoping so, for the best at that point. In time. Right. I didn't know him that much. So I decided to... to um. I committed to, to the trip, which was kind of a, a turned out to be a disaster. Mm-hmm. Came back and we went to, we were preparing to go to Olympic qualifiers with Coach Hood. Mm-hmm. And when I came back from that Brazil trip, I never heard from him. But the morning of when we were looking to travel for the Olympic qualifiers, I, I got a phone call. Good luck. Do, do, do. I'm like, okay, thank you. You know, it's like, okay, I wouldn't, we came back from a whole trip, how long now? Mm-hmm. And then the morning to go on another trip, mm-hmm. you call in. So we then had a good relationship. Mm-hmm. Let me just see. Okay. Probably because you're taking advice from <laughs> from the wrong people. That's but he gave me, the son actually gave me advice in favor of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this <laughs> fellow, this fellow is played the long game. how I felt and, and, and decided to go. He's played the long because game. Because of the advice of them. <laughs> He's played the long game. It, it seemed right at the time, is, is what we are saying. Yeah. It seemed right yeah. at the time. Maybe it 
it mm -hmm. was fun as expected. Talking to it was very mm -hmm. eye-opening on 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 many levels. But right. you know what? You know the part we reached to now. What's that? You must give us a funny story, something that took took part took place. Sorry, at some part of your career. Could be something funny? in a game, yeah, a training session, something that well, would know. make us laugh. Nothing. I don't know if it's nothing to do with me. I don't think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it's funny, but it was definitely a learning experience. And, you know, it was, when looking back at it, I could only laugh and smile to see how far I've reached. Um, I remember my first, our, our first time playing for the national team. We were preparing for the under-19 tournament that was held back in Trinidad mm -hmm. at the CONCACAF tournament. Um, so we automatically had a spot there, mm -hmm. but we, we went as like an invitational team to the tournament, the Caribbean tournament in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So now game against Jamaica, we playing on this field next to our prison. So the prisoners <laughs> outside, you know, having a time on the roof or wherever, <laughs> the crowd going off and we playing Jamaica. That was the last game of the, the group, the state, that group stage for Jamaica. And, um, First time representing Trinidad and Tobago. Nice, feeling good. And a player pushed me and I literally hit her an elbow. Yeah. But the referee didn't see. The whole crowd went off. Got a, a red card. Oh, wow. Your first right? game? So you got I, a red card? Yeah, no, that was the first game, but that was the last game all right, the right, at yeah. the group stage. Uh huh. No, going in the this is first time. I crying, 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 crying like a baby. Mm -hmm. 14 years of age, right? So going in the stands, I'd also go in the stands. Have a bottle of drinking. Half time now. The referee coming off the funeral. And if you see me running with the bottle in my hand to hit the referee. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll send a hand for you next and door. The coach, the coach <laughs> over back. So, so now, after the game, Ricardo Nelson was our manager. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you have to go and apologize to the referee. So now going to the referee, going and apologize. And she said, Trini, you lucky. You remind me of myself. <laughs> or else, you'll have been in some problems. <laughs> and from that day, from, from since then till now, Every we, we we good, you know we we really good. Her name is Diane from from Guyana. Uh, She's one of the best referees in in in, in FIFA women, in women's game. And um, yeah, that time she was like, "Chini, you lucky. You remind me of myself <laughs> when I was good." <laughs> talking so, about yeah. that, talking about that fiery spark, Miley. What do you attribute that to? Where where you, where you inherited that from? Where you got that from? Where you, I inherited your, from? Your, your sense of of of. Justice and your, your combative spirit, essentially, you know. Well, you see, you see, growing up in the ghetto makes you rough, and and and, and it, it, it 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 makes you. Where, where tough, exactly? Right? Which where exactly? Strong. You say ghetto. What 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 location? Saint James, Diego Martin. No, well, I'm from I'm from Bayside from the Towers. West. Nile Street, Cookery. Nile Street, Cookery, to be exact. Okay. Right. And um, yeah, I've seen it all. You know, you you know you. you fighting growing up and everything so it just make you rough tough aggressive and just uh, but but it's more so passion a lot of people take my aggression and combativeness you know my my they take my passion for 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 you know being combative and aggressive and you know it's not not much i can say is, you know i just know i'm just extremely passionate about everything that i do and it comes off to some people as aggression and, and, and being combative. So. so you were passionate about giving a referee a drink. <laughs> uh, well you know you see wrong that around that time I was I was you know I was like a rebel without a cause. Let me, let me just put it at that. No I'm a rebel without a cause. <laughs> okay. Maybe one thing I wanna say before we leave. Um when you decide to coach, right? You mm -hmm. you said that you needed to get calm. Um don't lose your passion. Your, your passion is required in coaching, right? I yeah. said I needed to get patience. To get, yeah, patience, yeah. right, patience. Yeah, you have the patience, you have the patience. I watch you, 
with Kai mm-hmm. on mornings. You mm-hmm. have it already. You have right. it already. So don't lose it. Don't lose the passion though. Don't lose it at all. Right. That that Thank necessary you. and your players will feed off of that. No, I agree. I totally agree. No. If you think to... that is why I've, I've butted heads with a lot of local coaches because you know, as 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 a player, as a player, you you want a coach that is as competitive as you are, right? And if he or she isn't, you're gonna have you're gonna have a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Yeah, as well, mm-hmm. you're the player, you the person on the field, the player, the person on the field. Um, so. That's the person going out to the war. So they have to feel that they had the support of everybody, everybody in it with them. So, yeah. Correct. I think I think after you finish the business of qualifying for the Women's World Cup, mm-hmm. <laughs> then that coaching <laughs> waiting there for you, right? Uh, that, yes, that, 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 that waiting for you and, and the support that, that you need or want, yeah, yeah, people will enter back you on that. Thank you so very much. So, this brings us to the end, Millie Atten Johnson. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for your service to Trinidad and Tobago. I want to be sitting down in front of a TV because I ain't really going to no World Cups, but I want to be sitting down in front of a TV watching you with your hand on your chest singing the national anthem proudly. The great One of the greatest feelings in the world is, is walking on that field and singing your national anthem. Yes, same here, Millie. Best wishes. Um, You beat Barney up. Chancellor didn't beat me yet, so we had to see where you really made so up sometime. I can't reach you. You messed up that word. You know, I like you for that. You know, your memory long. Your memory long. He, he always, he always reaching. He never reaches. He always reaches. Yeah. So you'll see about that next time. Thanks again, Millie. All right, All right Millie. No Stay problem. Good. Take care, guys. Okay, bye. I'm going to take Millie up that Chancellor then. Nah, you want that. Trade in. Lay it all out. Uh, Lay it all out. You're going to die. You want that. All right. All right. Uh, See everyone in. uh, See? (laughs) 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 All right. And that takes us to the end of our. Yeah, right. Me not good at them things. You go ahead. I have no ideas either. Um. Um. The Bernie and Barney Show will be back every other Wednesday. We'll be back every other Wednesday. We'll be back two Wednesdays from now. No, yeah, what? two Wednesdays from now. If they hear us on this Wednesday. <laughs> Listen out for Bernie and Barney. Um, every, Wednesday, every other Wednesday. Every other Wednesday. Uh, later, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that real horrible. <laughs> it's not generic something we want. Um, Listen no. out for the Bernie and Body show every other Wednesday. The Bernie and Body, as I say. <laughs> <laughs> Listen out for the Bernie and Barney show every other Wednesday on your favorite podcast, <laughs> your favorite podcast platforms. However, however. Only go fix that. Back, eh? uh, okay, put that one down for history. One for the archives. Oh, that mean we know in history. <laughs> that's a never. special, that's a special one. That's a special one. <laughs> Thing is, uh, and we out. Yeah. People like it and the crowd give me the People like it to the people what they want. People like it, tell them all the People like it all the food on your people. People like it all the time you hear the trap. People like it, what's on up in the yard. People like it.